And a lot of times they don't look at us as valuable as let's say for example men. And that's when we have to be like, well, guess what? It's not just about my beauty. I can sit down with any executive. I can sit down with whomever it may be. You know, I can have an intellectual conversation. And I think it is important, you know? We have to empower each other, mija. Tu sabes, you know. I'm really excited to be talking to such a strong as Latina. Thank you, gracias, mi amor. Not only are you big on like the glam, the beauty, but you're big on the financial stability. I know you accomplished something major this week. Tell us about it. Well, I'll say this much. Um, I have come from the bottom I because I always want people to know the background story. I never want people to think that I got it easy. My mom is uh, immigrated from the Dominican Republic to the Mexican border, came to the United States. We used to clean houses, sell flowers in the stoplights, and I've literally gone through everything. I was homeless at one point in life, and today I own nine, well, nine investment properties in the Dominican Republic, and I currently just put out, like a couple of days ago, Amara Residence, uh, in Las Terrenas, in Samana, in the Dominican Republic, that's 42 apartments, 12 penthouses. El querer es poder. If you really want to achieve something in life, anything is possible as long as you're willing to put in the work. And I've been willing to put in the work. <laughs> the pandemic definitely gave me a moment to catch my breath, to explore, to travel, to, you know, just to do different things. And I started getting into real estate and buying properties, doing Airbnbs, and it's something new to me. It has nothing to do with music, but I kind of like feeling like a boss. Yes, you accomplished so much. You've been working since you were four. You've been hustling, 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 but you're so humble. And oh, thank you. I love it. Like, you know, you're on social media not saying, hey, look at this purse. Hey, look at this car. You're like, hey, ladies, get your money up, get businesses. And that's what I love about you. Yes, I love to empower other women and I love women that I can look up to. Like, I am that girl that if we're homegirls, I'm gonna be like, girl, look. I found out this great opportunity for you, go for it. Like, I'm never like the hating type. I always want you to encourage me and I want to encourage you because I feel like women, we have so much to offer. And a lot of times they don't look at us as valuable as let's say, for example, men. And that's when we have to be like, well, guess what? It's not just about my beauty. I can sit down with any executive. I can sit down with whomever it may be. You know, I can have an intellectual conversation. And I think it is important, you know? We have to empower each other, mija. Tu sabes, you know. 100%, yes, 100%. You have such a good heart. From the way you're able to forgive your father and still continue that relationship with no yes. bad blood, like that is something that people don't use, like can't just walk, look past, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, this season on Love & Hip Hop Miami, the fourth season, um, last season, the third, you guys had the opportunity of seeing me reconnect with my father. And then this time around, you know, things have changed a little bit. I'll tell you this much. My father, since the pandemic now, lives home with me. Um, mind you, he was never involved in my life ever. But life has a funny way of working. And I always say just because uh, he wasn't a good father doesn't mean that I don't, you know, that I have to be a bad daughter. I want to show you an example of what you missed out on. And I know that not everybody is capable of forgiving that way, but forgiveness truly is for yourself and for your own personal healing. So, you know, I definitely want people to see the journey because it's not as pretty and as cute as it looks on social media. This season, I kind of put it out there and I let the world see, you know, what really happens inside my household. That's cool. <laughs> I'm excited to see it. And you did something that, you know, most people strive to do. I remember watching interviews, they're like, I'm gonna buy my house, my mom's house, I'm gonna buy my mom's house. And what did you do? You bought I my bought my mom a house. So That's amazing. Yeah. Yes, you know, I always remember being small, you know, being young and telling my mom, you know, whenever I saw her struggling and working, cause my mom was a cook, um, and she would come home all burnt up and, you know, she would go through so much. And I always used to say, one day, mommy, I'm gonna buy you a really big, nice house and you're never gonna have to work and I'm gonna take care of you and all those things. And now as an adult, to be able to say that I actually accomplished all the things I promised her. Um, oh, damn it. No, I missed buying her a limo. I remember I used to say I was gonna buy her a limo, but <laughs> <That's next. laughs> yeah, I missed that part, but um, it makes me feel very good to know that, that I've been the best daughter I can be to her. She appears a lot last season and She's the voice of reason for you. Like, even when you don't want to hear, because I have the same type of relationship with my mom, and you can yeah. count on them for being brutally honest. Yeah, and my mom is definitely very honest. I love the fact that Love & Hip Hop also gave me the opportunity of bringing my mom along because she is such a big and such an important part of my life. Um, everything that I am today is thanks to her, and I'll never, you know, discredit her for all the efforts and all the hard work that she had to do for me to be here today. We have a beautiful relationship, but everything is not great. 
we argue all the time. We have our ups and downs. And even now this season, you'll see how we, you know, disagree because my mom's not the biggest fan of my man. And I love me, my man. I met Alan and Alan is a realtor. One thing led to the other and we kind of... <laughs> So, mm. You know what's funny? One of my favorite moments last season was what, was when MJ came into the kitchen with his shirt off and a towel, and I was like, "Come on!" <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit. It was a little bit of lie. Um, fortunately, things didn't work out like it happens in many relationships. I wish him nothing but the best, and I'll always be here to support him. But now I'm in a different place in life. I'm in love. I'm happy. I'm doing my investments. I am. I'm in a different place in life and I have a different vision. I think that I've matured, I have grown, I'm more of, a, you know, more of a woman and I have a clearer vision of what I really want. I love that. So I know you have a new love interest this season. What lessons did you learn from your previous relationship that you took into this one? I definitely learned that you shouldn't put your, uh, your personal life like that, you know, your love interest on national TV because they can get very overwhelming. And imagine if the whole world got to see every time you have a problem and everybody is very judgmental and everybody has something to say. So it makes it very hard and it's very difficult. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I know better now. I definitely learned communication is key and you have to find someone that is as driven as you are. I'm a very driven, ambitious person. Like I'm always like, let's go. I push myself to the core till I'm falling apart. And I need to also be able to be with someone that is as hungry as I am. So you need to find that balance within your relationship. It's a beautiful thing when the person you're with can teach you something and put you on. Yeah, for and sure, for sure. And I think it's beautiful to be able to grow with someone, you know, people automatically expect that if you're financially well off, you should just look for a rich man. You should look for someone who's a super millionaire. And I would, I have all the possibilities of doing it. I mean, I have, politicians, NBA players, rappers, everybody that you can imagine all of my DMs, but I really love the, the story of growing together and working together into creating an empire. You've been on Love & Hip Hop for three seasons. What has been one of your favorite moments so far, all, like of all of the seasons? Um, well, I'll say this season, not for nothing. I definitely had a lot of impactful moments, but being able to reconnect with my father, um, last season was one of those nice moments. I think that also talking about the Afro-Latino community, the first season, I also remember my fight with Veronica, defending my best friend at the moment, well at that time, Jojo was one of those moments as well. I've had a lot of um, interesting moments and also when I uh, gave my mom the opportunity of having her own empanada, empanada licious, her own empanada spot. So. I think Love & Hip Hop has followed me through beautiful and amazing journeys during uh, the past four or five years now. What can fans expect on this season of Love & Hip Hop? You can expect uh, new cast members, you can expect new drama, you can expect um, relatable stories, you can expect, you know, happiness, tears, you can expect a little bit of everything. This season, the format has changed. I feel like it's a little bit more polished. It's different from what people are accustomed you know, seeing. And um, I think that the people are really going to like it. And I'm excited for uh, the fan base to give us, you know, Twitter, you know, <laughs> Black Twitter. Let us know what we think about this new season. So you guys already know you can't miss us every Monday on BH1 at 9 p.m., the fourth season of Love & Hip Hop Miami. Yeah, we'll all be tuning in. Thank Yay! you so much, Amara. I really appreciate you taking the time. You really are an inspiration. You want to be, Amen. you say you want to be an inspiration, you are doing it. Amen, Tanlina. Thank you so much, my love. Que Dios te bendiga. Mwah. Mwah.